<laughs> All right, let's get serious for a moment. Uh, you mentioned this uh, new structure that's um, going to right. be moving forward here for the Trump campaign. Where does this leave Corey Lewandowski? Well, he remains campaign manager in title, but he now has to share power, a considerable amount of it, with Paul Manafort, which is something he did not want to do. This is a power struggle, as I said, that Trump has resolved more on the side of Paul Manafort than his very loyal and able campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. And the real factor here, Elaine, is Lewandowski was just overworked, and he's also embattled for reasons that are well established. He has a somewhat brusque relationship with some in the media. He's been charged with simple battery, a misdemeanor, I grant you, in Florida for grabbing a female reporter at a Trump event in early March. And after the Wisconsin primary, Trump finally sat down and took the considered opinion, not just of Paul Manafort, of course, who had his own self-interest at stake, but also that of his wife, Melania, his son, Eric, and his daughter, Ivanka, and others within the Trump universe who said, look, Corey is simply too overworked to do all the things an effective campaign manager can and should do. You've got to delegate, distribute power, and let Manafort run some very crucial parts of this campaign and let Corey focus on what he does best, traveling with you, being your sort of whisperer about rhetoric and presentation and all of that, and focus on upcoming primaries, and then leave a lot of this other work to Manafort so he can deal with state organizations that have been desperate for some kind of signals from the Trump campaign about how to prepare, how to go seek delegates, how to get ready for state conventions, and how to budget for a potential general election campaign. All of this work needs to be done. It wasn't getting done. And now Trump, he hopes, has created a structure that will get it done. Uh, Major, as you know, Donald Trump didn't have campaign events Thursday, but he is hitting Ted Cruz in a new Instagram video over New York values. Let's play that for our viewers. Everyone understands that the values in New York City focus around money and the media. I saw something that no place on earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. All right, so given Donald Trump's lead here, is it even worth his time to bother to campaign in New York? Sure, this is a placeholder. Look, this is a very good time for Trump to focus on some campaign internals and power structures because he's got a huge lead in New York. He's got a sizable number of people in every congressional district signed up and ready to mobilize for his campaign. Actually, he has in New York what he hasn't had in many of the other states, a top-to-bottom and well-integrated organization. So Trump can take some days off the campaign trail and focus on some of these internal issues of delegation, power, and authority. And that's probably a wise move for Trump right now because those lines need to be established and clarified once and for all. And once that work is done, Trump can focus on some of these other issues. So a 15-second Instagram video working off one of the issues that the Trump campaign believes is an absolute lead pipe winner in New York is bashing Cruz on this New York values question. Believe me, they have other attack lines ready for Cruz in the coming days. Specifically, Cruz speaking out on the Senate floor against federal aid for victims of Superstorm Sandy. Not only did he speak out against it, he voted against it. Trump's got all that opposition research in its back pocket waiting to dump it on Cruz here in New York where that issue plays and plays very strongly. So given the fact that Senator Cruz is facing this line of attack for his New York values comment, uh, as we just heard again in that Instagram video, he still is spending a lot of time, Senator Cruz is, in New York's liberal strongholds, uh, including the Bronx and Brooklyn. What is the strategy there? Well, the strategy is twofold, really. To win some delegates if you can, there are congressional districts in New York with a very small number of registered Republicans, meaning it's a very small universe you have to persuade to get the votes necessary to win that congressional district because there are only a few Republicans, I don't mean a literal few, but a small number comparatively of Republicans to vote. So you go to those congressional districts, campaign, show you're willing to take some of the New York guff, to take the kind of, well, we're not in the Bronx, we're in Brooklyn. I didn't get a Bronx cheer, but I got something approximating <laughs> a Brooklyn cheer, so I know what Ted Cruz at least a little bit is going through. And you take that heat and you show your constituents in those congressional districts you're man enough to take it and you're eager enough to campaign close to them to try to win their support. That's really a congressional district strategy, but there's also a larger one. What Cruz is also trying to do in other states downstream, I'm thinking pr predominantly of Indiana and other, other states where there are more conservative voters, take that values issue, go to New York and say, I didn't back down. 
Maybe I'm not going to win New York, but you know what I'm talking about in more conservative parts of the Republican Party across the country, that New York values thing still resonates like it did for Cruz. So Cruz is taking a message that he knows is not going to win here in New York, but it may resonate elsewhere where it could matter. All right, Major Garrett, among the enthusiastic people of Brooklyn. Major, thank you so much. <laughs> You're so very kind, Elaine, enthusiastic, <laughs> so very kind.